Welcome back to Advent of Vim 2025. This is day 19 and we're going to talk about marks. But first a shout out again to my YouTube channel members. You are great. To my YouTube super chatters. I hope I see you in the next live stream again. And of course to my super thankers. And last but not least, of course, to my GitHub sponsors. Thank you all for this great support. But of course, also a big thank you to everyone watching these videos, liking, subscribing and hyping. You all are great. Hi, my name is Marco. Let's get started. We can think of marks as a way to bookmark different positions in a file or even across multiple files. But let's just get right into it. Let's jump down 10 lines here and let's say I want to bookmark this line. To bookmark something in a file, you can press M and then you press any of the lowercase letters. So we're on assembly line A here. So let's say this is our bookmark A. So that makes it easy to remember, right? So let's press M A and now we have a mark here. Let's say we want to scroll down here a little bit, read a bit in the file here, do something. And then we want to go back to the place we bookmarked. To jump back to this bookmark, you have two ways. You can use the single quote and then the name of the register. That's a little bit less precise way to jump. There's another way with the back tick, but for that, I'm going to change the mark here because I was starting at the beginning of the line when I pressed the mark. So if I mark this again as A, so MA again at the start of the word here, let's first scroll down a little bit here again and do the quotation mark and A again to jump back up. And you see now I'm at the start of the line. But if I use back tick A, I jump exactly to the point where I set the mark in the line. So it even remembers the column you're at. So let's scroll down a little bit more and do another mark here so that we have more than one. Let's say here at the end, I'm just gonna use the mark E for that. to Remember this, and I'm actually going to go to the end of the line here just for kicks. And now I'm gonna press M E and I've got this new mark here. So I can jump between mark A and between mark E, wherever I am in this file. And I could do this with all the other letters too, right? You can also use marks in conjunction with commands and motions. Let's jump back a few paragraphs here. And let's say I wanted to delete everything till the mark that I set to the end here. I can do D quotation mark E. Now I deleted all the things from here to there. I can also just visually select it, for example. So I press V back tick A. And now we visually selected everything from the place we were before to the position where we set mark A. So let's just quickly uh, use O to jump to the other end of the selection. So, so that's the place we were before, right? Okay, let's abort this here. Now I want to show you that you can actually see the marks you have because there's no visual indication if you're just scrolling around here in Vim, but you can get a list of marks. So I'm going to use the marks command for that. Here we have the mark A. And oh, another thing I can tell you right now is like, how long will these marks last? So mark E is nowhere to be seen anymore, right? But let's say at mark A first, you can see here this table of marks. We have the mark itself, the name of it, then the line and the column. And there's another column where it says file or text. So for lowercase marks, you see the line where the actual mark is set as a text. And for uppercase marks, there will be the file name here. As I already said, and you can still see, there's no mark E here anymore, anywhere. And that's because we deleted the line with mark E and then the mark also disappears. So you might be wondering what happens if I change the lines before the mark? Does it move with the added lines or do we go to a completely different place here? Let's just try out. Let's jump to the top of the file here and let's just duplicate this line here a little bit. Now the assembly line A where our mark lift is shifted down a little bit, right? Let's go back up and then let's jump to the mark again. Let's do back tick A and we see this still works. So your marks still work even if you add or remove text in front or after them. And they even survive restarts of Vim. So let's write this file here and quit and just restart Vim with the same file here. Jump to the top and jump back to mark A and you see there's still mark A available here for us. If we actually wanted to delete a mark manually, we can also do that. There's the del marks command for that. And then you give it the A or the target mark you want to delete. So let's delete mark A here. And let's see if this worked marks. And you see there's no mark A anymore. Before I talk about global marks, you probably noticed that there are some other marks here that we didn't set manually. We can open up the mark motions help section here to actually learn more about them. You can also see there's this uh, short explanation of the two ways you can jump to marks and some more ways to set some special marks here. And there should also somewhere be 
a description of all the other marks that are created by Vim and not manually. Yeah, here you can see about the numbered marks and the lowercase and the uppercase marks. And a little bit further down, there's a description of what these actually are. And then here are some other special marks like these uh, opening or closing square bracket marks here. And also the others here. There's also like the dot mark that remembers the position where the last change was made. So you can use that also to jump there. Or for example, this head mark here that remembers the last position where you left insert mode. And there are all kinds of neat automatically created marks here. So let's close this and let's open up another file here. Like let's go to the inventory. Let's say we wanted to have this as our global I mark for inventory. So we can use M capital I and now we've got a global mark. So let's look at the marks again first. You see here, this is the capital I mark. And currently we have the text displayed here because we are currently in this file. But let's jump back to the other file here and to the other alternate buffer. And let's look at the marks again. Here, there's only the capital I. You have the line and the column that we can see, but it just displays the file name. And we can, of course, jump to that with either the single quote and then capital I. Or we could also have used the backtick. But in this case, it wouldn't have made any difference. And so you can have like a list of global marks of your favorite files. So you can replicate a little bit of what Harpoon as a plugin does here. For example, let's open the my vimrc file. So the vimrc, you could also mark this as like capital V. And so I could simply use capital I to jump back to the inventory from anywhere I would be. Even from within this file, I could, of course, jump also to the actual line I marked here globally. Or if I wanted to change my configuration file for Vim because I just wanted to change something, I don't need to type in E my Vimrc or go to the actual path there. But instead, I could simply jump back to my capital V and I'm right here to change my config because that's our favorite pastime here in Vim land, right? Even more if you're using NeoVim, I guess. I use both. So let's create some more local marks in here because I want to show you something else. Let's make this mark A and mark A again. <laughs> I, I meant to do another mark. So mark B or whatever, mark C. So let's check with marks. So you see we have to use lowercase letter marks here. And if you wanted to get rid of all of those, we can use the del marks thing without an actual argument of the target mark. But if we use an exclamation mark, it will get rid of all the local marks, the lowercase marks here. So let's check again. And ABC are gone here. But the global marks still persist. So these are really great if you want to have some bookmarks to some frequently used files you have, even maybe project unrelated like this configuration file or something like that. But of course, there also could be in some kind of project because actually you decide what you want to do with all these powers you get from Vim, right? And also you decide what you do with the power of your mouse click here or your Vim movement extension for your operating system or browser, of course. You decide if you click the like button, if you click the hype button, if you subscribe to this channel, or if you even become a member of this channel with one of the options available. And of course, you could also use GitHub sponsors or Kofi to click some buttons and support me even more. Otherwise, feel also free to leave a comment. What do you use marks for? I hope you will be here tomorrow again. I will be. See you around and take care.